My name is Arlene Francis, and this is I've Got a Secret. I've Got a Secret, brought to you tonight by Tony, creator of fine beauty products, for the woman who prefers the natural look of beauty care at home. Live from New York, here is I've Got a Secret, starring Steve Allen. Hi. Uh, good evening and welcome to I've Got a Problem here. Just a moment. I've Got a Secret. Uh, the attractive young lady on my desk <laughs> is, whoops, you'll burn your little nose off, is Susie. And uh, before we meet her owner and hear about her secret, let's meet the members of our panel. Susie, don't go away, sweetheart. You have to meet the panel. Here, first of all, is Betsy Palmer. And sitting next to her is Bill Cullen. And then there's Bess Meyerson. Hi. And there's Henry Morgan, too. If you're, uh, if you're all set to play the game, just bark. Yeah. Okay, very well then. Now uh, let's meet our other first contestants, please. Good evening, sir. Just uh, come right in here in this chair and make yourself at home. We've already met Susie. So will you tell me first your name? I am Paul Seidel. All right, from and New York. Uh, you're from New York City. Just sit right in there close to our microphone. Uh, now, first, let's show the audience Susie's secret. Here it is. Uh, as you can see, we're taking no chances here. Now, let's show the audience uh, Susie Jr.'s secret. Now, panel, the clue concerns what this dog does for a living and what that dog over there does for a living. And so I guess we're playing What's My Line on this uh, go-around. And we'll start with Betsy Palmer. Um, Mr. Seidel, yes. is Susie number one Susie number two's mother? No. Are they uh, related to one another? No. It doesn't matter anyway. It doesn't make any no. difference. Do they do this with human beings? Yes. Other people are involved. Is no. 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 Other no, people no. are not involved, but they do it with human beings? Yes. Aw, <laughs> oh, come on now. You are pulling my leg. <laughs> How can you do something with human beings and yet you don't do it with people? Well, there is a little confusion here. Uh, the human element is involved. It is involved. Yeah, yeah. Do you do it inside of a bread box? <laughs> Uh -oh. Good for you, Susie. I feel the same she way. She doesn't like the buzzer. <laughs> yes. I didn't do it. I didn't. because I may bleed any moment. <laughs> All right, whose turn is it now? Uh, uh, Bill. <laughs> but when his time is up, don't ring the buzzer. <laughs> uh, Susie, uh, is there a product involved in what you do? No. 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 Susie, uh, do you perform a service? No. no. Well, yes. Uh, in a way. Something like that. Susie, yes. uh, is this the kind of a thing to which you go to the customer to perform the service? No, I'd say no to that kind of a question. Does the customer or customers come to Susie mm -hmm. for this service? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh, Is that all right? <laughs> oh, no, let's, I think... Our I, I think we ought to have the buzzer. I, uh, Our buzzer man over here is whistling with his own mouth. How do you like that? <laughs> you don't get a check for that, you know. All right, uh, there's half the money shot, and now best. Well, now, <laughs> now, that's a shock. now, when the people come to uh, receive the services, or that, that means, of course, that they come to watch Susie Sr. and Jr. perform. That They're is... performing dogs. Yes. Does Susie Jr. do what Susie Sr. used to do, and C Susie Sr. is jealous? This kind of thing? Well, you're mighty, mighty close to it. Uh, should we say that's 
close enough to uh, win the... Let's have a buzzer on that. No. 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 We want to keep going. All right. There's another panic whistle over there. And uh, $60 down, uh, Henry? Well, let's see. I guess uh, what she does is what trick dogs do. I, I have well, to let me does. say this, Henry. You, you've got the general direction. They are performing dogs, but now let's go for what this one does for a living. Well, Bass said that this well, one... Oh, wait a minute. And there it goes doing it now. <laughs> oh, all right, you can go, go ahead. We can guess while you're wherever you're going. I don't know where you're going. <laughs> That's what I love about live television. But the guessing can go right on, Henry. Do I want to know where he was? <laughs> no, but I do, I'll tell you that. Well, our time is up. We've reached the end of our money and our patience and everything else. I'll tell you, uh, these girls are gainfully employed, as I've already mentioned. Now, Susie here happens to be one of the lovely stars of the Folie Bergère, oh. which explains... Uh, Which explains why she's been wearing this robe, because we certainly couldn't let her appear on television in the costume that the girls wear in the Foley's Brigere, you see? <laughs> and as for Susie Jr.'s secret, what else? She is her understudy. <laughs> like any full-fledged star, Susie is considered so important to the uh, show, seriously, that she has a full-time understudy standing by just in case. And Susie Jr. has been in training for many months now, and it's, it's uh, really very tricky what they do. But first, uh, we'll remove Susie's robe, but she's wearing a fur coat underneath it, it's all right. <laughs> and uh, now we've arranged for Susie uh, to uh, show you a little bit of what she does. You all set? Okay. Oh, uh, bless it. And it's quite remarkable. Paul Seidel and Susie of the Follies Bajer. Ladies and gentlemen, mon ami Susie. Merci, Susie. Allez. Suzy, let us show off. Allons-y. Watch it. Ready. Bravo, Suzy. Very good. Now let us do something easy, eh? No, no, not the Susie, that is net. No, no, Susie. Susie, one, two, three. One. Paul Seidel and Susie of the Police Bridge here. That's really wonderful. Well, sir, right now we have something very important for you to see. We'll be right back. Now may we have our next contestant, please. Now, would you tell us your name and your home city? My name is Jim Goss, and I'm from Chicago, Illinois. Mm -hmm. Panel, Mr. Goss recently entered a contest, and I'm happy to say that he won first prize. 
which I understand you've already received. I received it this past Saturday. That's right. Now, can you tell us what it was you won as a prize? No, that's my secret. Okay, well, if you'll whisper to me, we'll let the audience see what's up. Well, that's first prize. I shudder to think what second prize uh, <laughs> might have been. Anyway, panel, to help you with the game, the clue to Mr. Goss's secret concerns, obviously, what he received as first prize, and we'll start this time with Bill Cullen. Was this, Jim, a tangible thing, an actual object? Yes. Was it alive? You might say that, yes. From, <laughs> from the audience's reaction, I gather, is it something that is alive and possibly normally be considered dangerous? No. Not dangerous? Not normally, no, no. Then it's, not, then it's something you're, you're happy to have, to have received. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. $20 down, 60 to go. Bess? Uh, when you received this prize, did you take it home? Mm, not exactly, no. Is it, um, could it possibly be someone of the other sex? I mean, did you win a, a girl or a... No. That's silly. Um, you didn't take it home. Now, did you give it away? Did I? <laughs> he gave it back, anyway. Uh... Oh, is it here, by the way? Are we going to see it? You're going to I bring it so. out on stage? Yeah, yes. you'll be able yes? to see it. Is it, uh... Would we know what it was by the size, of course? Is it... <laughs> I think so. I mean, is it something enormous, like an elephant? <laughs> Quite that big. No, forty dollars down, forty to go, Henry. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know what's so funny about that. Well, we'll see. Is, was it human? Yes. I believe that's safe to say. Yes. Oh, I wasn't nervous. Uh, <laughs> did you? You want a human? Yes. <laughs> I you wish everybody did. Test for that. Uh, <laughs> is it? A, is it a very small human? No. A very big one, I would say, actually. You want a large human. <laughs> $60 down, 20 to go. Betsy? Mr. Gauze, did you win a date with someone? No, definitely not, no. You won a human, a female human? No, no. A male human? A male human. Yes, yes. You won a fellow. All right, well, there goes the money. You were getting pretty close to it there, panel. Uh, before I tell you Mr. Goss's secret, I have a little note just for you from the producers of this program. I got a secret. It says this. Dear panel, we invited Mr. Goss to appear on our program with his secret in order to teach you to appreciate us and so that you won't complain so much the next time we play a simple little trick on all of you. Yours truly, the producers. And panel, this note refers to uh, a contest that the producers of my late night uh, TV show dreamed up. Uh, and Mr. Goss is the winner of this contest. Will you tell the panel what you received as first prize? I won Steve Allen for a day. Now, uh, from the look on Henry's face, I, I know he's thinking, who wants to win a Steve Allen for a day? <laughs> oh, I was just wondering uh, why you entered. <laughs> Well, well wait, wait, could I ask a question? Yeah. Was this the first prize? <laughs> yeah. The best, we could, <laughs> best we could do, Henry. I was Actually, giving a party, and I needed someone to play the piano. Yes, that really was about the size of it. The, the rules of the contest called for people to write in 25 words or less why they wanted to uh, win me as their piano player for the night, actually. And Mr. Goss won because of neatness, sincerity, and aptness of thought, and because he was the only one who entered. No, actually, there were, <laughs> there were really thousands of entries we received, but he had to win out over many warm and sincere postcards such as this. And these, this one is from Springfield, New Jersey. Mrs. Betty Fingerhut, she says, my husband says he won't let that bum Steve Allen in his house to play piano for him, and I say he will let that bum <laughs> Steve Allen in his house. This is from Memphis, Tennessee, from John Callow. Um, he says, dear sirs, I really don't want Steve Allen at my party at all, but I'm a compulsive contest enterer. <laughs> <laughs> and this is from Nancy Kay of Chicago 30, Illinois. She says, I want Steve Allen to play the piano at my party because we don't have anyone else booked for that night. <laughs> anyway, uh, it was a legitimate thing, and... I don't know how Mr. Goss and his guests uh, uh, liked it, but I had a wonderful time. Uh, I guess they all had fun too, didn't they? 
They all said so, yeah. Yeah, they're really a wonderful bunch of people. And hello to them again if they're watching right now. We have a little bit of movie film, just so you won't think we dreamed all this up. Can they roll that right now for us, just to prove that it really happened? It was a place called the uh, the Franklin House, wasn't That's it? That's correct, Steve. Yes. What's the address of it? Might as well give them a plug. 7138 Southwestern. Yeah, out in the south side of Chicago, my old home neighborhood, as a matter of fact. And uh, they had a drummer for me, so I wouldn't feel lonesome. And we had a marvelous time there, a bass player, too. Considering that I could have ended up anywhere and might have had a terrible time, I want to say that I think I had a better time than anybody at that party, and in a sense, I think I won first prize. Anyway, thanks to you for having me. Thank it was you, great Steve. fun. Jim Goff. <laughs> now, on Wednesday night at the Morosco Theater, a new Broadway play called Beekman Place will be making its premiere. And from all the out-of-town reports, it should be a big hit. Anyway, how could it miss with a star like Miss Arlene Francis? Here she is. Arlene, it's nice to have you with us. Tell the panel what you've got there, will you? I have uh, in my left hand here that knows what my right hand is doing, <laughs> four samples of handwriting from the panel. Mm -hmm. And what we did with these four samples was send them to someone who had no connection whatsoever with I've Got a Secret. Mm -hmm. They were unsigned. There was no name on them, just whether it was male or female was the only thing that had to be known. And then they were sent to a, ha to an, um, a handwriting analyst. expert, an analyst, who reads character from the handwriting. So that they, the person that did this had no idea that it had anything to do with any famous person or anything else. They were just asked to analyze mm -hmm. these four statements that were found. Right. Now, the panel may be wondering where we got the handwriting. Well, we had spies in your own apartments and homes. How do you like that? From Betsy's husband, for example, we received this little note, which we have enlarged here, so you can see it. It says, I wish and Vinnie wishes you all the happiness and love in your new home that we have in ours. That's female, all right. Uh-huh. And from Ann Cullen, we got this list of songs jotted down in Bill's handwriting. We don't know why, but that I is. I wish you love. Smoke gets in your eyes as a result, I guess. Oklahoma, getting to know you. Lamplight, music goes round and round. I don't know what that list was <laughs> from, Bill. I don't know. And uh, from Bess Meyerson's uh, daughter, Barbara, we got this little note. Again, here's Sweetheart, here is your allowance. Be sure to cover up properly if it should rain or look threatening. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, from Henry's apartment, we simply ran in and stole this uh, scrap of paper with his handwriting on it and we show you this enlarged this book is dedicated to my mother it isn't exactly what she had in mind but then neither was I <laughs> <laughs> now uh, Arlene uh, you've already explained to the panel uh, what's up here we've had these handwritings uh, analyzed we sent them to someone who didn't know whose writing handwriting they what they were and um, yeah, before you uh, read these reports, let me tell you once again that we, we did this in two steps. Somebody has no connection with the show, send it to somebody else, and uh, it's, so it's all entirely legit. They don't know anything about television. Uh, so we have these uh, things here now, and we're going to read the, an the uh, analyses, and uh, you see if you can tell who we're talking about. See how well you know yourselves. Remember, this was done by an expert, now we'll show character the, expert on handwriting. We'll show the audience at home who the first handwriting is. All right. Now, there is a great deal of culture shown in this handwriting with a strong appreciation for music. The writer has an outgoing personality, is an independent thinker, logical, intelligent. However, the heart usually rules over sound judgment. The writer is usually very expressive and shows feelings easily, very diplomatic, often goes to great lengths not to hurt anyone's feelings. The outstanding characteristics Caution and diplomacy. All right, Betsy, who do you think that is? We'll go right down the line. <laughs> she doesn't think um, anybody. <laughs> me. Isn't that awful to say? <laughs> All right, Bill, do you agree? That's, that's, that's a coincidence. I think it's me. <laughs> How about you, Bess? I was sure it was me. <laughs> Henry? I'm sure it's Bess. <laughs> ah, well, you and Bess are right. All right, 
Arlene, read another one, and we'll let the folks out in the audience know uh, whose handwriting we're looking at here. All right. This handwriting shows a creative mind, an extrovert. However, the writer is often self-conscious. A very generous individual, the writer has a great deal of dignity and poise and takes pride in what he or she does. The writer is optimistic, no matter what the job he or she expects to succeed. The writer tends to be a dreamer and a procrastinator, has a logical mind, but relies a great deal on intuition. The writer is sympathetic, sentimental, warm-hearted, and cheerful. An outstanding characteristic, a strong desire to collect things. Let's see who is it. Me. Me. <laughs> Do you think it's you too, Bill? And I really think that one's me, because I collect. I'm sure it's me. <laughs> it's got to be me. I think that's uh, it's Betsy. Betsy. That's well, Betsy. it is Betsy, yes. Yeah. Very good. I take after both Betsy and Bill. <laughs> now, the next one is obviously either Bill or Henry. So, uh, shall we make the audience guess, too, without telling them who it is this time, maybe? All right. All, right. All right, we'll show you. Yeah, make it easy on the audience. Are you going to show who it is? All yeah. right. Okay. Now, here we go. This is the handwriting of an extremely talented person, don't both yell at once now, who knows what he wants and how to reach his goal, has keen comprehension. This is a cultured person who possesses literary talent. The person is a loyal friend, but chooses close friends carefully. He feels things deeply, but keeps emotions hidden. This person does things deliberately rather than impulsively. Outstanding characteristic, stubbornness. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> That's Henry, Henry says it's, uh... That's Henry. I say it's Henry. I say it's Bill. I say Bill, it's everybody seems Bill. to think that's Henry. Well, that's pretty interesting because it's Bill Cullen. I thought it was you. You are. I would have sworn I knew that fella. Well, now, of course, the next one is, uh... Let Henry. me guess. Let me guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not going to be tricky now. The next one is obviously Henry's. So I think it'll be interesting to hear it anyway. This is the handwriting of a creative person. An investigative thinker, intellectually thirsty. I think that's the only way it mentions here, Henry. Uh, this person likes to talk, is usually very frank. If he thinks that something is right, there are no two ways about it. This writer is positive, decisive, and enthusiastic about projects. Unfortunately, this enthusiasm doesn't always last very long. <laughs> the emotional nature is quite variable, shows no pattern. This handwriting shows both irritability irritability and cheerfulness. <laughs> the writer is at times sensitive and emotional and at other times cool and self-possessed. Outstanding characteristic, unpredictability. That's, That's pretty good for you, Henry. Oh, yeah. Henry, do you, uh, do you admit to all of that? I think that whoever did these things is very, very good. I think so, too. They're marvelous, the Actually, Actually, uh, reading handwriting is not like reading tea leaves. It is a more or less scientific proposition. Mm -hmm. And uh, do any of you take exception to any of the things you heard about yourself? No, you know what? Yeah. I just excuse me. I'm Bill? I no, think no, no. I'm Betsy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but what would have happened, really? Because I know sometimes when I write a note to somebody like that, I really take time to write nicely. Mm -hmm. But yes. sometimes I don't write nicely. They figure it out, though, because they in handwriting out? analysis, no matter if you scribble or write very carefully in a Palmer method, they see the little peculiarities the yes. in the expression, yes. just yes. as people do in their voices. That's the Betsy Palmer method. That's the oh. Betsy Palmer method. Oh, thank you. <laughs> what is it, uh, Henry? Uh, the most uh, uh, fascinating thing in, in what the, whoever did this said about me was, the uh, enthusiasm that doesn't last too long. <laughs> and I wish nobody knew about that. <laughs> they do now, Henry. Well, we're sure that the enthusiasm for Arlene Francis's play is going to last a long yeah. time, but if we don't let her out yeah. of here, she's going to miss the premiere performance, the, the pre-premiere performance Preview tonight. tonight. Yes, Preview. I've got my motor running inside and outside. She really has a limousine <laughs> outside, and she has to run. Arlene, thank you so much, thank dear. You. Best of all. We'll be back with you again right after this important message. Talented, very talented. Yeah, the panel very talented. all agrees they're all very talented, talented and very yes. handsome and charming and lovely and just marvelous. <laughs> oh, Incidentally, we'll be back next week with Miss Carol Channing and, of course, all of our friends. I Tonight, choose everybody. my friends carefully. <laughs> 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 Commerce down by pennies.